Welcome to Islam for Dummies. The step-by-step -step guide to seeing how ridiculous attacks against Islam really are. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is a video response to the White Roses video, Three Things About Islam. In their video description, it says, Three surprising things you probably didn't know about Islam. Now, these three things are very surprising, especially to Muslims, because we've never heard of them before. As anti-Islamic propaganda, these ridiculous ideas are nothing new. Now, to refute the White Roses video, we have to go no further than their own sources and referenced Quranic verses. So now let's address their three false claims in reverse order. The White Rose's third false claim is that the Qur'an supposedly commands Muslims to lie about our violent goals using something called taqiyya. From the White Rose's video description, following the link to one of their sources, the reference used to prove that Muslims supposedly lie to promote our religion says that taqiyya has something to do with the Shia minority. The vast majority of Muslims have never heard what the heck taqiyya is, so let's examine the Wikipedia reference from the White Rose's video description. Taqiyya is a practice in Shia Islam whereby adherents may conceal their faith when they feel that they are under threat, persecution, or compulsion. So the 10% minority Shia may use taqiyya to conceal their faith in fear of direct harm. For example, Wikipedia cites the Qur'an chapter 16 verse 106, which refers to the case of Ammar bin Yasir, who was forced to renounce his beliefs under physical duress and torture. This is very similar to the Old Testament, where God commands Samuel to deceive people to prevent Saul from killing him. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. So back to the White Rose's reference, what's the majority's Sunni point of view? While Sunnis agree that it's allowed to conceal the faith to protect their lives, they greatly differ with the Shia point of view. There is no such terminology as taqiyya in Sunni jurisprudence. Now let's watch the White Rose's first distortion of their own references about taqiyya. For non-Muslims, this principle called taqiyya is another surprising concept of Islam. As we saw from their own reference, for the vast majority of Islam, there is no such terminology as taqiyya. Now let's continue where we left off with the reference. Protecting one's belief during extreme or exigent circumstances is called ittirar, and this word is not specific to concealing the faith. For example, one is allowed to consume prohibited or haram food to protect one's life under the jurisprudence of ittirar. However, in no way does this suggest that this is used as a means to promote the religion. Now let's watch the White Rose's second distortion of their own references about taqiyya. Muslims are allowed to deceive non-Muslims if it helps Islam. Again, as we saw from their own reference, for the 90% Sunni majority of Islam, in no way does this suggest that this ittirar is used as a means to promote the religion. And even for the Shia minority, their vast majority Twelvers, according to Wikipedia's own reference number 6, According to Imam Khomeini, taqiyya is permitted only when one's life is jeopardized. But when Islam is in danger, it's not permitted even if it leads to one's death. Now let's watch the White Rose's third distortion of their own references about taqiyya. While most other religions speak highly of truthfulness, the Quran instructs Muslims to lie to non-Muslims about their beliefs and their political ambitions to protect and spread Islam. And again, according to the White Rose's own references, the Sunni majority and the majority of Shia completely reject the concept of hiding our beliefs to promote our religion. 
But where have we seen this idea before? Now I remember. The white roses are confusing the Qur'an with what Paul said in the New Testament. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. Now that we know that this idea to do and say anything to anyone to spread a religion comes from Paul and not from the Qur'an, let's go back to the White Roses video. Islam as a religion of peace. Muslim organizations worldwide often declare that Islam is a religion of peace. But what does that really mean? Since their references said that Sunni Muslims and the Shia's majority do not lie to spread our religion, that really means that the White Rose's own references have just debunked their entire video. It's ironic that the White Roses slander Muslims of lying to promote our ideology by lying to promote their ideology. The White Rose's second false claim is that the Qur'an supposedly commands Muslims to replace all governments with Sharia law. From the White Rose's video description, following the link to their same source, we can see that their reference for Islam's supposed objective of establishing Sharia law is part of a sentence from the Qur'an chapter 8 verse 39, that religion should be only for Allah. Not only is the term sharia ah absent from this entire verse, it's also not surprising that Islam haters can only quote a partial phrase of the Qur'an. The context starts in the previous verse, as shown in our video response to Geert Wilder's fitna. Tell those who disbelieve that if they cease from persecution of believers, that which is past will be forgiven them. The omitted previous verse explicitly forgives religious persecutors if they cease and does not demand conversion. And fight them until persecution is no more and religion is all for Allah. That if they cease, then lo, Allah is seer of what they do. This verse calls to fight only to end persecution and oppression. The expression religion is all for Allah means choosing Islam should be entirely for the sake of Allah and not by force, especially viewing that the omitted end of the verse repeats again if they cease, which proves the objective is to end persecution. As a result, quite the opposite of oppressing people to accept Islam, this verse commands to fight if needed to liberate people from religious persecution or oppression. Allah, Allah, Allah. So let's see the White Roses distort this verse to the opposite meaning. It is the duty of every Muslim to keep striving until all governments have been converted to Sharia law. So not only does the White Roses referenced verse have absolutely nothing to do with Sharia, but it even offers persecutors forgiveness if they cease trying to force their religion on Muslims. The White Roses haven't merely taken the verse out of context. They've distorted the meaning to the exact opposite of what the verse says. And the fear-mongering about Sharia from the White Roses is that non-Muslims would be forced to adhere to Islamic law. But that is a direct contradiction to what the Qur'an says. Let the people of the gospel judge by that which God has revealed therein. Reverence for the original Torah and gospel is apparent throughout the Qur'an. But this idea of rejecting all other religious laws is very familiar. Where have we seen it before? Now I remember, the white roses are confusing the Qur'an with what Paul said. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. 
as we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. Now that's what I call religious intolerance. The White Rose's first false claim is that the Qur'an supposedly abrogated peaceful and tolerant verses with violent verses later. From the White Rose's video description, following the link to their other source, we can see that their reference for the Qur'an's supposed abrogation of peaceful and tolerant verses is not from a single Islamic scholar or site, but from their own dishonest misrepresentations. First, they point out Quran chapter 2, verse 256, that there is no compulsion in religion in Islam, which they expect us to believe has been abrogated by which verse? Yup, you guessed it, the same verse we just showed to forgive persecutors if they stop trying to force their religion on Muslims. And not surprisingly, this hyperlink leads to 10 translations of the verse, not one of which contains their false translation of fight them until only Allah is worshipped. The verse about no compulsion in religion was revealed to prevent some Muslims from trying to revert their children back to Islam after having vowed them to Judaism through a pre-Islamic custom. This verse cannot be abrogated as clarified by the end of the verse. And he who rejects false deities and believes in Allah has grasped a firm handhold. In other words, you're not allowed to force religion on people because it's an internal matter of belief. How on earth can we force people to believe something that they don't believe in? Look, there's nothing controversial about the concept of abrogation in the Qur'an, where a temporary law is replaced with a new law. An example in Islam is the gradual prohibition of wine for Muslims, where being intoxicated during prayer was prohibited, which was followed by the outright prohibition of wine. On the other hand, abrogation in Christianity is quite controversial. For example, even though the Messiah Jesus, whom Muslims revere, taught the law of Moses and the commandments, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. However, the church radically abrogated the teachings of Jesus and the law of Moses by following the teachings of Paul. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Oh really? I wonder what the Messiah Jesus would have to say about that. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. And according to the Messiah Jesus, that makes Paul and the Christian church least in the kingdom of heaven. And the fear-mongering about abrogation from the White Roses is that the Qur'an requires Muslims to make the jihad and kill or convert non-Muslims. Now, the greater jihad which is defined struggle, is against the ego for spiritual purification and growth. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The best jihad is that of speaking a word of truth to an unjust ruler. In the Qur'an, armed struggle is only allowed against an aggressor or to secure for people the freedom of religion. The Qur'an says, and struggle against them with it, i.e. with the Qur'an, a grand struggle. So this grand jihad is explaining the Qur'an to non-Muslims. How else are we going to use the Qur'an to make jihad? By throwing it at people, hitting people over the head with it? In conclusion, being deceptive to promote a religion, intolerance of other religious laws, and the controversy of abrogation are big problems for Paul and the Christian church, but not for the Qur'an. And based on how the White Roses dishonestly distorted their own references, 
it's really no wonder they couldn't quote a single source or Quranic verse throughout their entire video to support their ridiculous claims. It's really funny how the White Roses accuse Muslims of lying to promote our religion by lying through their teeth about Muslims and Islam. The White Roses are insulting the intelligence of their own audience. We sincerely hope you enjoyed this episode of Islam for Domis, and we hope to see you again next time.